again, I'm Susan Wallace and I'm from Shumi Public. And because I've been there for about two and a half million years, <laughs> I've been to a building project, two mail levy increases, and you know, just generally asking them if something extra needs done with the building or the three years Shumi didn't have a public swimming pool and you need extra money for children's programming, those kind of things. That you just show up and ask for money. Um, I've been through four city managers and heaven knows how many commissioners. Um, when we started planning this, Pat said, now you can't say that it's helpful to be married to the city IT manager. <laughs> it is very helpful. <laughs> it means I know, every, you know, I know everybody. I meet the city manager early on. All of the staff pretty well know me, not because I'm a librarian. Some of them have never been in the library but they know me because of Rick. What's even more helpful is I am now the sister-in-law of one of the city commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> so I really married Rick 32 years ago because I knew someday his younger sister might marry him. <laughs> but these bridges, because we're not gonna show up every year asking for more money, we know that's not gonna happen. But the bridges to build, if you can start doing that well before you ever need this money, and then you continue those same practices afterwards, it makes the money so much easier. They know you, whether they ever come to the library or not, they know you, and they hear what you're doing. Um, it's, it's one place we have a huge advantage in small communities. We don't have a lot of the, the bells and whistles that they can pull off in the cities. We don't have art departments to do professional things for us, but it's easy to get to these people. You probably know them if you've lived in the town very long at all, and it's easy to meet them if you haven't. Um, so keep them informed of what's going on in the library. Show up at the city commission meetings, maybe not every meeting, but often enough that they remember you, and especially if you've got something to report, some reading programs starting soon. These are the things we're going to be doing. Um, send them your monthly reports. If you do a newsletter, send it to them. Uh, you know, it's, what's an extra 40 cent, six cent stamp for each of those commissioners to get it into their hands and let them know that you're doing things. Don't count that they may read your article in the newspaper, but if the library gets a nice spread in the newspaper about a program, make some extra copies and send it to them. Make sure they know what's happening. Um, watch how you phrase your comments, not only when you're talking to them, but talking to other people in the community. You know, they'll say, well, that city commission just, they're not very supportive of the library, they, two of them don't even have library cards. Don't say those kind of things. We're small towns, it's gonna get back to them. So always try to phrase things in a positive manner, even if you don't really feel too positive about them right now. Show them that the library is relevant. Be partnering with other groups who may then in their reports mention that, oh, the, the library helped us out with this, or you know, we did this with the library. And it's not always got to be the city commission. You know, do things with the school district and the school board because it all still gets back to them. And what? We may be saving some money if we're partnering on some things. The school libraries don't have much money now. So the school libraries all have one or more computers in the libraries that are set to our consortium. And the school libraries all have a student public library card in the school library's name. And those kids can request books and then just tell the librarian, this is what I've requested, you know. Joe Smith has requested this book. and. We get it in for them. In this case, the school librarians are also nice enough. They come and pick them up. <laughs> and they check them out to their kids. The kids don't care where it comes from. They got the book they wanted to read. The school didn't have money to buy it right now. And it's a wonderful PR tool, in addition to helping everybody. Um, so look for ways you can help. Look for ways you can help with Park and Rec Commission. Look for ways you can partner with the swimming pool. Be appreciative of what they do. You know, the city lets us use their swimming pool every year, now we have one again, for the summer reading program. Send thank you notes. Make sure that, that the staff at the pool has a good evening. Don't have them going back to the city and saying, those library kids were a mess. It was just awful. I know we pull in a bunch of kids that night. It is a huge crowd we have. We require that everybody bring a parent with them. It's not the pool rules, it's our rules. And the city pool staff consistently tells the city that's one of the best groups we have all summer. We have no problems. They are welcome to come back. So those things all help your credibility. And tell stories. We all hear stories. You get stories from people about how you helped with this. You know, somebody 
you know, I have tons of them. Collect them and make sure you use them. Make sure, you know, when you go to the city commission and say, we need money for this, you know, these are the people we help. We have these people in looking for jobs, you know. You can go through the stories and you know what yours are. <coughs> and as always, be sure and tell them you, you thank them after you're finished with whatever you're doing. Um, if I had any other things they missed. Be realistic when you request. You know, don't go in and say, well, let me see, we're getting two meals and I'd like six meals because, you know, and have these grandiose plans that you know are going to happen. Be realistic with what you want. Take it in small phases if you have to. Um, and, and have some consequences. I don't think it's a bad idea to say, you know, if we don't receive this additional funding, we may have to cut hours. You know, we may have to cut staff. You know, things cannot go on the way they are. Um, and, and be sure it's not always you as the staff that's coming forward. If you can get your library board member, if you can get friends members, if you can get somebody who's in the library every day or, or is telling you these stories of how helpful you've been, if you can get them to, to write a letter, to be there talking at the commission meetings, that's even better because you've got the vested interest. You're the one getting the paycheck every and those other people are the ones who, who will have more credibility often with the city commission. I don't know how many of you see my voice. It's um, the newsletter, it's Voice for American Libraries, United for Libraries Association of Library Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundations. Um, it's an ALA group. Uh, it used to be that the trustees had one group and Prince had another group, and uh, they combined. And they um, have an article on advocacy. And they have this one article. It's something that um, I've never tried. But St. Paul Public Library uh, believes in it very strongly. It's citizen lobbying. They've been doing it for over 18 years. Our process is simple but effective. We create a standing committee of the board called the Advocacy Committee. It begins meeting at nine to ten months before the library's budget is finalized. We have representation on the committee from every political board in the city. The committee meets with the library director for several monthly meetings to develop a platform of funding initiatives for which we will lobby. The platform is put into a concise two-sided 8 by 11 inch document with rationale and specific amounts requested. Then committee members who live in the ward of each city council member schedule appointments to present the platform to them in their offices. Committee members attend public testimony and budget hearings, and a copy of the platform is issued as a press release to all local media. And that, that's a, a lot more formal than what Susan mentioned, but if you can get um, library users to come in and speak to the commission for you. That's the ideal because when you speak, you're self-serving. Um, even though we like to think, and I believe we are, thinking of all of our patrons when we're asking for money to improve our services. Nevertheless, it's our job. But if you bring in uh, one of your users who talks to the commission, or if they meet one-on-one -on -one with them, not in their offices, obviously, but in their homes or on the street or in the grocery store. That's very effective. So I just want to share that. <laughs>